Hello, welcome to IT Chronicles, Tenant Tech. I'm Shane Carlson. I'm here with my co-host, Kirsten McGowan and Kathleen Wilson. Hi, Shane. Hi. Hello. With us today, we have Tim Roddy from Fidelis Security. Tim, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's nice to be with you guys. How are y'all? Doing, doing pretty well. Pretty well indeed. So, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the, the state of cybersecurity today. I mean, we're obviously entering a new year. We had a lot of interesting cyber events over the last year. Um, you know, talk to us a little about kind of the state of cyber and, and what you guys at Fidelis are, are doing and how you're approaching the market. Sure. Well, you know, the state of cybersecurity is, is, is going to be similar to what we've seen in the past, which is, you know, there's a lot of threat actors out there. Everyone's trying their best to to stop them, but they, you know, some number of percentage of them are going to get through. There's going to be this year when we look back on 2018, a retrospective that's much like last year and the year before that, and et cetera, where there were high profile breaches that, that occurred. Um, and that's exacerbated by worldwide a shortage in, in, in security um, practitioners that everyone's got to deal with, whether you're a small business, large business, government or non-government. So um, those are the kind of the challenges that, that we've got to all to face, no matter what side of the aisle we're in, in uh, either an industry or, or government uh, as a vendor or not as a vendor. Um, at Fidelis, we focus uh, our solutions on automated detection and response. Um, an acknowledgement that some things are going to get through, we need to be able to detect, uh, then detect the motion, cut down on the time that it dwells within the organization, and um, enable uh, the organization to react quicker and re remedy uh, uh, the problem that's occurred. Excellent. So, so Tim, I want to add a little bit. Sorry, Kristen, I want to cut you up, but no, it's like, fine. Yeah. What, you, what, what's, the, what's the average time to when an organization actually detects when they be breached? Because um, myself working in the IT industry, I know it, the number is shocking. So, you know, a lot of people have been breached, but how many days until they actually know that they've been breached in average? Well, that's the big challenge. That's a very good question. Um, so the answer is probably not one you want to hear, but it varies depending on the organization, right? Uh, if you look at something consulting like the, answer. <laughs> yeah, you look at the Verizon breach report, speaking of consulting, um, and you'll see, you know, I can't remember what the exact dates were in the, in the 2017 report, but, you know, it's in the hundreds of days on average. But for some it's much less, others it's longer. What we use, do with our platform for automated detection and response is try and shorten that time. You can't fix the problem until you at least know what happened, right? So you want to you wanna identify those things sooner using technologies like deception and using data leakage tools and things like that to find that data is being exfiltrated or malware is spreading within the organization um, if you can identify those things going on, then, then you put a stop to the, the dwell time between when it happened and when you become aware of it. Yeah, so Tim, what, where do you think organizations need to be pushing their resources in, in trying to stop people getting in or in knowing what to do when they have been breached? Well, they have to spend the resources on both. We, we, we need to use security tools to stop as much as possible, but a sophisticated attacker, and we are dealing with sophisticated attackers, are going to test against all the antivirus signatures out there, but you still want to have that deployed to at least stop the employee who just happens to do something dumb, clicking on something they shouldn't, that's not a sophisticated attack, and stop that from getting in. So that means using up-to-date tools, keeping them patched, keeping them up-to-date, making sure that you're Software in your applications, whether it be desktop or business applications running your data center or in the cloud, are patched and up to date. We've all seen a lot of these uh, breaches where, you know, there was a, a vulnerability that just didn't get patched. we got to stay on top of those things. And that's not necessarily even the security personnel within the organization doing that. we just got to stay on top of that and, and get it done. Um, that's the first part of it. The second part of it is to... Um, you know, use tools to to look for it, realizing that some things are going to get through. I mean, I don't think you see much marketing anymore on the prevent, prevent side saying we stop 100% of malware. It's not possible. Um, when you have the sophisticated attacks that go on where you can morph software, uh, malicious software, so that it can avoid uh, a signature detection. 
so, so question for you here. I mean, you know, we, we're obviously very used to some of the traditional means of, of infiltration. You know, we've got the phishing attacks and, the, and now lately we got spear phishing attacks by nation states and other things. As we start moving more towards technology like blockchain and, you know, where we're literally locking value up and things like cryptocurrency and, and a lot of different things, how do you think the attacks on corporations and that type of digital value is going to change, uh, you know, the, the way we not only protect ourselves against uh, these types of attacks, but how these attacks start getting more prevalent? I mean, we're, we're literally seeing physical kidnappings in the world over bitcoins and things like that. As we see that enter more of the enterprise space with blockchain and other things, what do you think is going to change in our world? Well, um, you know, with cryptocurrencies, I know from some of the things that I've heard and read, some of the ransomware attacks have required payment via the cryptocurrency um, because it becomes pretty much untraceable. Um, so, you know, it's being leveraged there to make it harder to find these people after the fact. Um, uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's one, one trend that I think you'll see continue. Um, have they actually attacked the cryptocurrencies themselves? Not that I'm aware of, but nothing would surprise me at this point, right? Yeah. I've heard of people who were, you know, dabbling and investing in some of these cryptocurrencies and they couldn't find their password, right? And you, there's no password um, um, uh, uh, system that'll, you know, help you reclaim your password. So um, I don't know how much of that will be there. We'll find out exactly how... Uh, uh, self-healing these cryptocurrencies are in the networks, I guess, in the coming months and years uh, here. But for sure, we've definitely seen so far being used as a method of, of compensating the the attacker uh, that becomes pretty much untraceable. So uh, about the human aspect, right? Because it sounds like from Fidel's, is your point of view is like try to use tools as much as possible to detect, report, and, and, and enable people. But I think, um, you know, and Kirsten was probably getting at it a bit, bit before, I'm gonna dive a little bit more. It's like, you get the best tools in the world, but you know, if you're sweeping stuff under the rug, which I don't know, Equifax and a few others have done, it's like, you know, there's that, there's that whole process of communication. And um, I was gonna say, when you have major security breach, what's your, your security response plan? Um, and I think a lot of organizations focus and people focus a lot on the tools, but they don't focus necessarily as how we as an organization internally and externally, because, you know, a lot of organizations are holding, you know, customer data, which is now very valuable out and, you know, out in the wild. So where can Fidelis help organizations with that? So, um, our platform automates detection and response because there are so many alerts. And as I mentioned earlier, there's such a shortage of people. And as you just said, you got the tools, but you, know, you got to make sure you're using them. So the tool is designed, the, the platform is designed to make the threat hunter as efficient as possible to get rid of the noise down to where you really have an issue there. So that's where we help out in terms of being as efficient as possible. But the human side of it, the organizational side of it that you just mentioned, it's critical. Organizations need to have a plan in place ahead of time. What are we going to do? Now, the larger the organization, the more likely to have that. But a lot of organizations are just trying to, big and small, you know, trying to get their business done. And they're probably thinking, well, you know, it's not going to happen to me. But if it does, they have a huge problem, one that could, you know, kill their business or severely damage it. Um, so it's critically important that, that uh, they have a plan in place, especially when it deals with personal information, PII, personal identifiable information. There are laws in virtually every country now and going into effect in May of 2018, just in four and a half months, is GDPR in Europe that applies to any company that has employees in Europe, which means you can be in a, a company from another country outside of the European Union. It could be in Canada, it could be in Australia. And if you've got employees there, um, it applies to you and you need to have a plan in place. You need to be able to notify, you need to be able to react, you need to be able to notify the employee, you need to be able, uh, be able to tell them whether their data has been um, uh, attacked. Um, and in the case of a European employee, they have the right to be forgotten and have their data provided to them. What do you know about me? Mm -hmm. Applies to everybody. It applies to all corporations and case law is gonna take years for this to truly flesh out. I mean, it was largely put in place because of social media um, companies, not uh, the average corporation that's just, you know, trying to, to run a business. 
but nevertheless, it does have enough uh, coverage on all of them. And it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out in the years, literally the years to come. Yep. Well, Tim, thanks. Thanks so much for your time today. It's been an interesting chat and obviously security is going to be hitting the headlines constantly again in, in 2018. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So it's going to be another interesting year on that front. So thanks a lot for spending some time with us today. And I'm, I'm sure you've given some people a lot of food for thought. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me and Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Happy New Year. Yeah.